So I don't usually have a whole lot of hot takes, but today I'm coming in with one that's gonna be slightly controversial because it's about one of Coach's most popular bags. First time seeing my face. Hello, welcome. My name is Brandon, and around here you can expect videos on a variety of fabulous topics, including fashion, lifestyle, vlogs, and unboxings. So if that sounds interesting to you, please click subscribe and we'll get into today's video. So yes, as I mentioned, the bag that we're talking about is one of Coach's most popular lines, and of course, that is the Rogue. Now, specifically, I only have the Rogue 20 in my collection. This is from last year, and this is the Rogue 20 in the plaid print. I was really drawn to the blue and green plaid, of course. It is a really gorgeous print, and I love me a print bag. So when it was a leather bag with this print in a silhouette that I didn't have yet, I was excited to jump on it and add this to my collection. Now, because I like to stay positive around here and I'm fairly easy to please, <laughs> I thought I would start first with the pros of this bag. Now, of course, the Rogue line is one of Coach's higher end bags that they offer. It comes in a variety of colors and I believe there are at least three or four different leather types offered in this bag. And in fact, you can even build your own Rogue either in store or online, which obviously leads it to be one of the more popular silhouettes. So the build and material quality is just exceptional. So to me, it is a huge pro when a brand supports a silhouette and offers it in various materials and hardware finishes. I think that is definitely a pro because if you like this silhouette, you're gonna be able to find it um, in different seasons and different prints, different colors. And I think that is really important when you are a collector to have that variety available to you whenever you're ready to add a new bag to your collection. So along those same lines, um, and as I mentioned, the quality of this bag is just bar none. The hardware is all very um, high quality. The assembly of this bag is very smart, very sturdy. It definitely will last a very long time. I think that is also another important factor when we're going out to spend money, especially rogue money, because these bags are more expensive, that you're at least getting a really high quality bag that you know is gonna last, and it has the attention to detail that is kind of necessary in a bag to know that it's worth what you're paying for it. Unfortunately though, that's kind of where the pros end for me. I mean, material and build quality, these things are very important, um, but for the Rogue 20, it was just, it fell a little flat for me. So getting into the cons, the list is a little bit longer. Starting off, this is a very weird shaped bag to carry crossbody. Because it is so square, it feels like you're just carrying around like a cinder block on a crossbody strap. And it just sits so far away from your body that it just feels kind of weird and it looks kind of weird. And I'm not really quite sure that anything they could do with the Rogue 20 could re remediate those issues. For me, it just is a weird silhouette to carry crossbody. And coming back to the handles as another con for me at least, and you know, I have fairly large hands, obviously. Um, this bag isn't necessarily designed for someone my size. I'm five foot 10, 200 pounds. Um, so I'm, you know, on the bigger side, but the handles are very small, very dainty. Uh, there is zero chance of me being able to get my hand through the top handles. So there's no way I could park it on my arm. Um, I think they did this intentionally to keep the handles really small because it fits when you fold the handles over, it fits perfectly in the bag. I don't know if that was intentional or not. It might've been, but the handles are just too small to carry. Um, you know, to park it on your arm. And when you purchase a Rogue of this size, and I'm not sure if it, this is for all of the sizes, but you do get a top 
handle um, strap that can help you carry it over your shoulder or on your arm. So I'm gonna attach that and show you now. So this bag comes with two shorter um, straps that you can attach to the bag to make it a shoulder bag or maybe if you wanna park it on your arm. Here it is with the um, top straps on there. This enables you to really carry this bag on your shoulder very comfortably. Um, you can also park it in the crook of your arm with this strap attached. Um, this is not I this is the first time I've brought these straps out since I bought them because I just don't like the way that this bag looks um, parked up on my shoulder because it's still quite thick and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this but I will show you some other shots um, it just feels kind of weird it feels really thick because again it's a cinder block on straps um, it's not really it's not the moment for me. I don't mind a shoulder bag, and in fact, I'm like looking to add one into my collection, but this particular silhouette is not really that great as a shoulder bag. Uh, of course, in my opinion, when you park it in the crook of your arm, it, you can see the top handles still, and it just seems kind of like unnecessary amount of extras going on right here so again this is not a way that I carry this bag so uh, you know if, if that's something that you think is interesting uh, more power to you but it is definitely not a way that I use this bag so that is another con for me next up is the way the crossbody strap attaches to this bag is just really weird to me and it's the placement of these d-rings they are on the interior on the four corners and that means when you attach the crossbody strap it is having to go from opposite sides of the bag and then it just creates this really weird feeling when you're carrying it crossbody because you're having to contend with the straps one of the crossbody straps further away than the other one you can't attach the crossbody straps um, to the same side on the d-rings because then it would tilt the bag forward or and i tried this um, if you put the crossbody strap on the outside it will tilt the bag towards you and if you lean away it will flip over so very strange um set up here i don't know because the zipper goes all the way down on both sides i don't know that they could have like attached a d-ring on the side anywhere i wish it did have a different way to attach the crossbody strap the next con is kind of specific to me but also i know there's a lot of you guys out there as well that like to decorate your bag now this is not conducive to that it comes with a little hang tag here um, but this, when you're carrying it, the way it attaches to this, um, and I believe they had it set to the handle um, hardware, but as soon as you move around, it's going to immediately fly inside of your bag. Um, it wants to sit on the inside of your bag because of the way that the handles fold down into the bag themselves. It does not want to keep the charm on the outside I mean it's even difficult to um, get it to sit out here for this but this also means because all of these D rings and all of these like attachment points are tilted towards the inside of the bag you can't really get charms to sit comfortably on this at all and I will show you I've got one of my coach bear charms out to show you guys um, how weird this looks, but I'm first going to attach it to the um, handle ring, you know, that attaches it to the bag. And I hope you're going to be able to see this, but it sticks out and it sits so funny. Um, and it also like kind of impedes the handle movement a little bit. So you've got like this right angle essentially where your charm is like sticking out. Now obviously the Coach Bear charm um, is quite large. So uh, we'll get to a smaller charm in a minute. But if I were to attach it um, to the D-ring that the handle, the secondary handle or the crossbody handle um, is for, again, you have this weird right angle 
that looks really silly and no matter how you rotate your charm it's going to look the same so anyway again this is a fairly large charm so i did grab a and when i say a large charm because this one is obviously like just as big but the um dog leash clip is fairly large on that this has a smaller um clip and essentially you get the same issue uh, a little less pronounced on this bag because this clip is a little bit smaller um, but again in certain positions it's gonna sit in the same weird like right angle situation which I'm not here for and it kind of bums me out because I love to decorate my bag I usually have a um, pocket back hand sanitizer holder on my bag and then I also have either the hang tag or a charm on my bag so I don't like the way it sits on here so I can't really do that so the hand sanitizer goes in my bag and then the hang tag I just I leave it on there and it does whatever it wants to do so I see that as a con again that might not necessarily be relevant to you so the last con is going to be probably one of the most controversial assuming you uh, weren't too blown away by my input on the other items um, but that is that I do not like the way the Rogue is set up just in general on the interior you've got these two small pockets on the outside and this large zipper pocket on the middle I don't like this in a handbag uh, I know that it's very popular it obviously carries on to the other sizes of the Rogue and I think in the larger settings that is actually a nice design to have a, a secure zipper pocket and then like an easy access smaller pocket but when we're talking about a bag this small to to have a lot of the space taken up by these outside pockets that are uncovered unzipped unsecured I just don't think it's really that useful so while it might be great in the bigger bags in the Rogue 20 I'm not having it I just imagine that you've got something you, you want to store all of your valuables in this zipper part um, this zipper compartment um, but the zipper compartment is the larger of the three compartments so you're really gonna have to put anything large in that center area and then it's zipped so you know the smaller items that might be a little bit more valuable think like your phone it's very thin your card case it's thin um, is going to be out in the open and if you are in an area where you know things might just get snatched out of your handbag this is a really great one to do it so again I'm not really here for this design I think they could have just um, made the pocket like the entire size of the bag or done something different um, not a fan all right so that is the end of the cons um, definitely use your best judgment when deciding on buying this bag go in and try it out if possible definitely look up other reviews maybe more positive outlooks on this bag because obviously I'm being quite critical of it all things being said about this particular bag I am glad that I have a rogue in my collection it is definitely a very interesting looking bag I love the print it makes me happy to see I just get a little frustrated trying to use this particular bag just because of the size and the weird limitations with the handle, the crossbody. It's just kind of a weird bag to use and it's definitely not one that I'm going to gravitate to very often. And in fact, I think I would only want to carry this one or two days in a row before I would switch back to my tote bag or maybe my Coach Ruby. Those are much more comfortable bags to carry both top handle and crossbody. So I am glad that I have it. It is mostly because of the print. I am going to explore the Rogue 30 or like the standard size Rogue or maybe the Rogue briefcase as a work bag uh, because I think that the separation would work really well for me and in fact my favorite work bag is the Brook carry-all and that has the three pocket system and I like that for work but for an everyday bag I just don't think that that works for me so 
I won't necessarily be exploring the Rogue 25 or the 12, especially that one is just tiny. Um, but I'm glad ultimately that I have this particular plaid one in my collection. It's a special case, and I think that if given the opportunity to purchase this bag again, I probably wouldn't, but it is going to be one that stays in my collection for some time. So obviously there was a lot to unpack here today. I hope that you found this video helpful if you are on the rogue buying journey. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Your guys' engagement in my content really helps me stay motivated to create these kinds of videos, which I really enjoy doing. If you're interested in seeing additional content by me, you can jump over to Instagram and TikTok and follow me there. My handle is at BVPDX. Again, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching, and until the next one, I will see you later. Bye!